All right, good morning, everyone. We um, pause there just for a second. I want to thank Governor Justice's office. Uh, this is on his Facebook page live this morning. Welcome, and especially the media. Thank you for being here in advance to help us spread the word about the importance of work zone safety. Our message, work zones are temporary. Actions behind the wheel can last forever. You'll be hearing from several speakers who are going to stress not only the importance of obeying the posted speed limit and simply just paying attention in work zones. And after comments from the podium, our guest speakers will be available for interviews. And again, thanks to Governor Justice's office for providing the live video streaming. Speaking of Governor Justice, I have a proclamation I'd like to share with you about today. Proclamation by Governor Jim Justice. I'd like to read it for you. Whereas, the great state of West Virginia is committed to performing the necessary inspection, maintenance, and construction work to ensure a safe, well-maintained roadway system and Whereas, work zones will be active daily throughout the state, and we must protect highway workers as they courageously work to improve the safety and the quality of life of those traveling through the mountain state. And, whereas we recognize those who work in roadway construction and maintenance, as well as traffic engineers, traffic operations personnel, toll workers, law enforcement officers, emergency personnel, and others to work on the open road. And whereas West Virginia is raising driver awareness, encouraging the need to slow down, stay alert, obey the signs and flag persons in the work zones. And with the aid of education and press events like today, we thank the enforcements to prevent crashes and injuries. And whereas the great state of West Virginia honors those who have been injured or lost their lives while working on our roadways. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Jim Justice Governor of the great state of West Virginia, do hereby proclaim April 22nd, 2024, as National Work Zone Safety Awareness Day in the Mountain State, and encourage all citizens to join me in this observance. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the great seal of the state of West Virginia to be affixed. Done at the capital, city of Charleston, state of West Virginia, this 22nd day of April in the year of our Lord, 2024, and in the 161st year of the great state of West Virginia. Signed, Jim Justice Governor. The men and one woman standing behind me, they're 57 in an orange vest and a black sash representing the 56 men and one woman representing the DOH employees that were killed across the state. Their names are on the Work Zone Safety Memorial located in Williamstown. Could these deaths have been prevented? Oh, well, we think so. By motorists paying attention and slowing down in work zones. Remember, it's heads up, phones down. And think about this for a moment. Work zones should be the safest portion of our highway system. Think about it. Motorists have been told well in advance there's signage that indicates that there's something going on. You're told to slow down and you're told to pay attention. If everyone did, work zones would indeed be safer. Our first speaker this morning, anxious to introduce him. I love his choice in clothing. He's the chief engineer at District Operations here in the West Virginia DOH. Mr. Joe Pack. Uh, on behalf of the secretary, I, 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 it's a pleasure to be able to speak here today. Uh, recent years, the Secretary has challenged us with the Division of Highways to stop thinking of the maintenance of traffic within work zones in a minimal capacity of what is the minimum we need there and to think of as the as a notion of more of what is actually needed, what is required, and what is the best issue that we need to have on the roadway 
to, in order to alert the traffic of the work that's being done within our right of way. Uh, the impact that we see today behind us should be felt, hopefully by everyone here, of, of the loss of 57 lives through the years. And oftentimes when we talk about traffic control, we, we speak in terms of, of cones and barrels and signage and inanimate objects which, which actually don't, shouldn't carry the impact of, of what you see here today. Because the men and the women that are behind me today represent the people that not only that have perished while serving as civil servants here with the Division of Highways, but also as doing the job today. They will return to work later today and, and go out into a work zone and perform their job duties. And if any of us can imagine what it's like to perform a job, our job in an active work zone with vehicles weighing up to 120,000 pounds driving by us at a speed of 55 miles an hour and trying to conduct yourself and perform your job duties the best you can and the struggles that that would provide. And it is impactful that the people behind us they're not just transportation workers or contractors. They have names such as people behind me that are, that are AC and Delwood and Phillip. And if we think of things like that, if we think of the, as people with names and individuals, we will slow down in the work zones. To stop thinking of that it's a work crew or it's, an equi or it's equipment, but it's, a, uh, it's someone that goes to church with you on Sundays. It's your neighbor. It, it's, it's your cousin's best friend who is out there trying to perform a job to get paid a salary and provide benefits to their family so that they can go home at the end of the day and enjoy their evening just like the rest of us do. So when we say we are asking, we are really begging people to slow down while in our work zones and to open their eyes to the point of who they see in the work zones, to, to recognize that there are people there and the way that we change through our driving habits when we see those individuals. Just recently, I was driving within my, my little subdivision, which has a maximum re requested speed limit on the private road at 20 miles an hour. And as I was driving, there was a group of young boys, probably between the ages of 8 and 12, playing football within a, matter, within a matter of feet of my vehicle. And I slowed down to around 4 or 5 miles per hour because I know those boys and I see them every day. And it made me slow down because I recognized it's not just a group of people or I'm not just trying to get to my destination, but those are those are lives that are beside the edge of the roadway. And we ask that everyone do the same thing out on our roads. And they just understand that those are lives in, within the right of way. Those are lives that are trying to perform a duty that makes your commute and your daily life better. And that's our, that's our request today is that the public joins with us as performing the maximum we can do to provide a safe work zone for our contractors and our transportation workers that are out there trying to make our world a little bit better every day. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Joe. Next, we're gonna hear from our federal partners. This is a Deputy Division Administrator with the FHWA, West Virginia Division, Mr. John Rogers. John. Thank you, Randy, for inviting us here today. I'd like to uh, extend our appreciation to Secretary Riston and also Governor Jim Justice and for inviting us. Uh, I'm going to give kind of the national perspective on some numbers with regards to work zones. Again, I'm John Rogers with Federal Highway uh, and just want to say really with Federal Highway, our overall goal is to reduce fatalities to zero and that also includes fatalities and work zones. I just want to say work zones play a critical uh, job in upgrading and maintaining our roadways in the nation. And also the IIJA provides a significant a number of resources and opportunities for the state of West Virginia to improve safety and mobility for all users. And so I'm going to cover national numbers. Uh, and recently, in about the last 10 years from 2013 to 2021, work zone fatalities increased significantly uh, to the tune of 62% which is a lot. Uh, just recently, there's a little bit better news on national numbers from 2021 to 2022. There's been some decreases. Uh, work zone fatalities decreased overall by 7.5%, and that's a, a point in the right direction. They also uh, slight decreases in fatal work zone crashes involving rear end collisions, and slight decreases in crashes involving heavy trucks. However, there's been a slight increase in 
percent of work zone crashes that involve speeding. So I just want to say, look out for workers. 94 workers nationwide were killed in highway work zones in 2022. Be aware of pedestrians and bicyclists. 145 pedestrians and bicyclists lost their lives in work zone crashes in 2022. Also, reduce your speed. Over 34% of the fatal work zone crashes involve speed as a contributing factor in 2022. Put down your phone. Nearly 21% of all fatal work zone crashes involve rearing collisions in 2022 as well. So give space to larger vehicles. About 30% of those fatal crashes involve um, motor vehicles, of, uh, commercial motor vehicles. And just want to repeat what's being said today. Um, actions behind the wheels can last forever and work zones are assigned to slow down. And um, we need all the workers, all the drivers to arrive home safely to your loved ones. What matters is yourself and the, the, um, the workers in the work zone. Let's all treat each other well and let's all get home alive. And I'd just like to conclude that by saying let's all be safe. Thank you, Rain. Good advice, thank you, Brian. Well, it's been said that when you mix orange cones plus blue lights that equals money out of your pocket our next speaker to offer some advice on speeding in work zones we're delighted to have colonel jack chambers of the west virginia state police with us Thank you, Mr. Dameron. Um, my name is Sergeant Walter. I'm not uh, Colonel Chambers. I'm here <laughs> to speak for him. Uh, we're just here to remind you all that uh, we want to keep everyone, these workers, safe, okay? So by doing that, please slow down, all right, and pay attention. Those are the two most important things when in a work zone, all right? Uh, we will be watching uh, across the state, okay, and monitoring situations um, across the state. So. We will have troopers in, in every work zone, along with the law enforcement across the state to uh, enforce speeding. Uh, remember, fines are double in work zone, um, so if you're, if you're speeding, you're going to pay. All right. All right. Thank you. Good advice from the men in green. Whether it's a West Virginia Division of Highways worker or our contract partners, they're all road workers working to improve our West Virginia roads. From the Contractors Association of West Virginia, here's Chief Executive Author, Officer Mr. Jason Pizzatello. Thank you, Randy, and thank you, Governor, for having us. Uh, this is a true partnership with our state police, our local law enforcement agencies, Public Service Commission, Federal Highway Administration, and the West Virginia Division of Highways. And on behalf of the 480 member companies and over 20,000 employees that make up the membership of the Contractors Association of West Virginia and the Asphalt Pavement Association of West Virginia, thank you for your dedication, all of you, to work zone safety as we begin what is going to be another historic construction season in West Virginia. As John said, it's easy to focus on the statistics, and he's right. But at CEWV, we prefer most of the time to focus on the people, the men and women like those behind me, who make your commute to work, school, vacation, church, and all the above better. All of these workers are fathers, mothers, sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, aunts and uncles who put their lives at risk every day for the benefit of the traveling public. So our ask is simple, and that's to slow down, obey the posted work zone speed limit, and always stay alert. Let's make sure we do our part to make sure these men and women behind me and those contractors that are out on the road today get back to their, their families just as safely as possible. Because that text message, that tweet, that Facebook post, that restaurant review, it can wait until later. These people, this is where they make a living is out on the work zone and we want to make sure they get home safely. And this issue has become personal to our association, its members and colleagues in recent days. Just a few weeks ago, a motorist ran over and killed a flagger working for all construction in a work zone on US 340 in Jefferson County, a preventable 
tragedy. And we all remember back in mid-March of this year, where a West Virginia De Department of Transportation worker, who thank the Lord is here with us today, was badly injured in an accident while working on Interstate 79 in Harrison County. Again, another preventable accident. And finally, just last week near Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, an early morning crash along Interstate 83 in York County left three construction workers dead. Preventable. The members of CAWV thank everyone who is here today, especially Governor Justice and Secretary Riston, who are promoting Work Zone Safety Awareness Day and Work Zone Safety Awareness Week throughout West Virginia, because this is truly a life or death situation. Let's make 2024 our best year yet for safety. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. As he mentioned, I'd like to introduce our last speaker who works for the West Virginia DOH. He was recently struck by a motorist while working in a work zone. And he's recently recovered enough to make the trip down from Clarksburg to the press conference today after spending three weeks in the hospital and in rehab. I've asked him to share his story today with you. This is Jordan Swagger. Jordan. Well, as they've mentioned, the need to be safer has never been bigger in today's society with all the technology that each and every one of us have at our <laughs> use. But as they said, we was set up. Uh, we was doing literally what we needed to do. We was well within the work zone and somehow or another, I managed to get hit by a vehicle, which turned out to be a drunk driver. And according to those that are around, I was thrown over 60 feet. I landed, I was unconscious. I'll just be honest with you, I, I don't remember anything from the 14th of March till after Easter. And since then, by nothing but by the good Lord above, I've made it enough to come down here with minimal injuries. But all in all, all I can tell you is this, you go to work one day, you expect to do your job like you do any other day of the week. And by somebody else slacking and doing what they want to do versus what we ask of them to do. Well, I ended up two hospitals later and still sitting at the house trying to get everything to work the way it's supposed to. So, with that being said, the list is kind of long, but the main ones, I've, I've had three broken bones in my skull. I've recently been told that there's an orbital fracture as well around my eye, uh, feet, legs, I mean, you name it, it's, it's been affected. So with all that being said, I'll let my wife get into a little bit more of the family adjusts, but all I can ask is, is pay attention. I mean, we read signs each and every day of how to get where we need to be. You can follow the signs as well in a work zone, and you can pay attention to what's around you, even if the sign don't tell you to. So that's basically all I've got. And other than that, I'm just thankful to be invited to be here. a big adjustment I have we have a two-year-old at home and when I got the call about him going about Jordan being hit I had to call somebody to take our two-year-old and he spent the whole three weeks with family being kind of tossed here and there I was able to go home a few times a week to be with him and take care of him but I mean, it was, it's still a pretty big adjustment. Every time we leave now, he cries for us. So it was a big adjustment for him and me as well, and all of our family put together. But um, 
just like everybody said, just take your time and slow down in work zones. Um, that's, that's all I can say. Thank you, Mrs. Stone. When I met her on the phone last week, she told me he got up to go to work that day and said goodbye, and the next thing she gets a phone call from his boss saying he's in the hospital. So just imagine that, if you will. Well, this Wednesday is the, uh, actually tomorrow, is it, Jennifer? It's Wednesday, promoting Go Orange Day, suggesting that you choose to wear some orange clothing that day. And when someone says, why are you wearing orange? Explain to them, we're honoring our fallen workers. And also, as I mentioned earlier, Wednesday, we're having a uh, ceremony at the West Virginia DOH Workers Memorial at the Williamstown Welcome Center on I-77. Starts at 1 o'clock. So media, thank you for attending and helping us promote the importance of work zones. And our speakers are available for interviews up here on the stage. And if we can do anything to be of assistance, please let the PR office know. Thank you for being here. And again, thank you for helping us promote work zone safety.